Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to route out this Foghorn Leghorn rooster from the cartoons. The idea is going to route out all the inner body sections, basically all the white that you see there, just leaving this nice black line behind. And then we'll pop some paint in and then cut it all out on a scroll saw towards the end. You could leave it on that wood if you wanted to. This is just rough fencing wood. If I just show you quickly, basically turns like that. And it's quite rough and it's cheap wood to purchase. But you spend five minutes sanding that down and you do get a nice finish on it. So as always for me, we've got our template done to size. We've stuck it down with some painter's tape and I like to use good old carbon paper or graphite paper and if you just slot that underneath and draw around it with a pen or something I prefer pen because it just stands up nicely against the uh, paper there shall I say so we've drawn all around it it's roughly 15 inches by 9 inches and we've stuck it down on these two pieces of fencing wood which I literally just glued together nothing fantastic there and you can basically just see the joint going down there so wood glue Clamped it overnight, that's all nicely solid now. And we give it a nice sanding down again the following day, just to make it nice and smooth. So there's our image for today. Fog on the rooster, you can just about see him on there. As always for me, we're gonna do all the, all this to remove. Take your time to shade in the areas that you wanna remove. You'll go, go away, come back, and start routing out somewhere here and you've, uh, that's the end of your project. As always for me, I like to use these CNC bits. They come in different degrees, 20s and 30s, 10s, 15s. We're gonna use a 20 today, and that's just literally the angle of the blade at the end there. I do have a small shaft on them, a 3.175 millimeter. That will fit a Dremel no problem if you have a Dremel router attachment. However, if you've got a quarter inch router like myself, you need one of these adapter reducer collets, 6.35 millimeter, and your CNC bit literally just slots into there. That will now fit your router, no problem. And we'll actually use this to do all our lines, always inside the line, remember? So we're gonna remove all this, so we'll just come up to that line there, and basically go around it all. Didn't take a lot of doing, it's, once you get into the swing of things, you can soon start cracking on and getting all the lines done. Once we've done all that, We'll pop on one of these end milling bits. They have the same size shaft, 3.175 millimeter. So we can just slot that into there, up to that barrier. Set that to the same depth. And then we're doing all the, clearing out all these shaded areas. These do come without the barrier. There's one there, exactly the same. But for some reason, some have these plastic on and some don't. So once we've cleared all that out, we'll give it a general tidy up with a Dremel and an engraving bit. Get it all nice sanded down and then we'll also cut it out on a scroll saw. We'll talk about the blade nearer the time. So for now we'll just set it at three millimeters. I do have a little gauge somewhere if I just find it. I've just made myself something like this piece of wood. We'll put our little CNC bit in, set it to three millimeters. I know that's three millimeters because more or less the same thickness or depth as the CNC bit. So we'll set it to three millimeters and then we'll start routing this one out. Then we'll paint it up nicely with acrylic paints, get some nice spray varnish on it, and we'll put it somewhere in the garden with the rest of them.
Right, we've made it all the way around with our CNC bit. As you can see from that, we've done all our lines. Coming out really nice. No problem with this little cheap fencing wood today. You do find some are better quality than others for some reason, even though it all comes off the same pallet. So we've done all our CNC work. Slightly deeper than 3mm, I would say, looking at that. Not a lot in it, but it's no problem. It's working out the way we want it. So we're just going to remove the CNC bit. And I'm going to pop on one of these end milling bits. eBay again for me, or Amazon, whichever you find. There will be online sites to search for. And remember, there's different bits out there. Spiral up cut is one that people use. You can get profile bits, liner bits, CNC bits, end milling bits. That's all you need for me personally. Now there is a fair section to move on the body. Personally myself, I think this little CNC uh, end milling bits will whip this out no problem. If not, straight flush bits, they have a quarter inch shaft. They certainly won't mess about on this wood. They'll fly out like it's nothing. They are a bit more aggressive. So I would be a little bit careful. This is the reason why we go around with the CNC bit, just to separate those sections. As we come in here, we don't want to catch one of these it will whip it off no problem so we'll see how it comes out but personally myself i think the little cnc bit will do all this okay it's just a case of sliding it into the same adapter call it 6.35 millimeter remember we'll set it to the nice depth there and we'll start routing out the rest of this Right, we've made it all the way round with the end milling bit. I must admit, I did have to change a bit halfway through and put on nice new shiny, shiny ones and it cut through like butter. I do tend to wear my bits out quite a bit. I like to get the money's worth out of it, as we say. But sometimes enough's enough. So we popped a new one on and it literally just cut through it really, really easy. So nice sharp bits nice dry wood and you won't go far wrong so foghorn's taking shape nicely you can see from there now what with the effect we're going for before we tidy this up with a couple of engraving bits on a flexi cable attached to a dremel i just want to cut it out first and that way when we can sand it down and just round the edges off at the same time now for me i like to use spiral blades on a scroll saw they are spiralled, the full length of the blade. They're a pinless blade, unfortunately. 
and you smooth on the way down, rough on the way up. This will cut in any direction a spiral blade. So you could literally put that on your saw like that, start there, and just feed that round like so. No problem whatsoever. I do prefer spiral blades. They're not for everybody. You'll either love or hate them. The other two options with your blades is a more common blade, pinned one. You'll get a pin at both edges and they just hook onto your more cheaper swords, I'm going to say. And you want it smooth on the way down, rougher on the way up and the blade facing towards you. You could use this one on this project, no problem, because there's nothing too technical. With this one though, you would have to feed that in. Imagine coming down there, feed that in and then turn the piece completely to feed down there. And then you'd have to turn it again to do that and then turn it again. There's a lot of turning and twisting. That's one of the reasons I don't like to use them. But uh, there's some fantastic folk out there that make it look so easy. If you're doing a delicate piece, another blade, it's the same effect, but it's pinless. So there's no pins on it at all. These are ideal if you're doing very detailed work with inner cups. You might you want to cut out this little section here. So you've drilled a pilot hole, you've fed that in, and we want to cut that out. That's no problem with that one. Whereas if you come in with a pin blade, you'll find those pins just get in the way. So pinless, pinned, or spiral for me. Unfortunately, with my old drapper saw, I do have to use these adapter clamps. And if you search drapper adapter clamps, you'll find these. And they're okay, they do the job. You have one at the top, one at the bottom, and a little allen key at the side. So you tighten it onto your blade, and then you would hook that on your saw as normal. So it's not the best in the world, but it certainly does the job. So I'll pop that spiral blade, and then we'll start to, onto the scroll saw, and then we'll start cutting this one out, and then we're ready for a general tidy up, a bit of sanding down, and then we'll be onto our painting side of things. Let's cut it out now. Right, you can see from that we've made it all the way around with our Pegasus number five spiral blade. And there's our Foghorn character taking shape nicely. Now, I'm not the best scroll in the world, and there's certain bits here that will need tidying up, but I don't mind doing that. That's all part of the project. When we come back after we've done a general tidy up and sanding down this will look totally different again so for that i like to use flexi cable like this this attaches to your dremel or rotary tool just ebay specials and a nice engraving bit on the end they come in all sizes and shapes and you get a pack of 30 for next to nothing really on this one here we will find a nice pointed one something like that Let's show you quickly. Once we've done our general tidying up, we're going to take it. No, too late. Uh, we use that one to get right down into these small areas there and give them a nice tidying up right down to these corner of the feathers. And you can angle that at an angle and come away like that, and that will give you a nice crispier point, if that makes sense. And then we'll use a bit of sandpaper. Just give it all nice down and then we'll even jump in with a little mouse and we give that a general going over as well. So a quick tidy up and then when we come back we'll be ready for painting. Mm. 
Right, that's enough sanding and general tidying up for me. We've done away with all our pencil lines and we've rounded off those edges and we also got rid of the little knobblies on the back there. So as far as I'm concerned, for these little fun projects, that's plenty, near enough, cleaned up for what we want. Now we're going to paint this today, just cheap, cheap acrylic paints. I like to water them down so it makes more of a stain than actual paint. And we'll get this all painted and then we'll do the black lines on the actual framework. Give it a nice good spraying down with a nice varnish. It won't be the best in the world, but it will do for what I want for my little bits. Okay, let's go and find some acrylic paint and then we'll start painting this one up. Right, that's it. This little project is finished. Now, after we've used the acrylic paints, just a simple case of once that's dry, I give it a nice three or four coats of Paint Factory gloss varnish, you can see from there. And that's it. So that's just enough to give it a nice shine and a little bit more protection with it going outside. But you certainly won't be your best, that's for sure. And you can see from that, just enough to give it a nice shine. I've actually painted the sides of this one black and we did the background, uh, the back piece as well, should I say. And that's it. Just a nice little fun project. So remember, it measures in at 17 inches by roughly 11 inches across. We use CNC bits to do all our lines and then we came in with the end milling bits to clear out with. We did have some straight flush bits put to one side, but we didn't need them. It came out really easy, especially when you use a nice new sharp bit. And then we painted it all with acrylic paints and sprayed on some nice gloss to give it a nice shiny, shiny finish. And that's it. This little project is a finish. So there you have him. Foghorn Leghorn. Thank you very much for watching.